Hey, Edens. Genesis 17. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, so he's 99, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will apply thee exceedingly. And, and Abram fell on his face. Sounds painful. And God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and then thou shalt be a father of many nations. All right, so here's God making his promise to, to Abram. This, this is the agreement that he'll be the father of many nations. Um, in other words, there's going to be, you know, his family will build an empire, basically. Uh, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations I have made thee. Abraham means father of a multitude or of nations. Uh, Abram means high father. Not sure why that had to change just because this is supposed to happen. But, um, you know, it's God. He can do what he wants to, right? Okay, so 17.6. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. All right. And I will, make the, uh, I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee, which is much better than kings coming on you. 17.7. Uh, uh, I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant, um, to, be a, uh, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. All right, so he's going to make this deal with Abraham now, because he's not Abram, you know, he's Abraham. And uh, the generations after Abraham, everlasting, meaning everybody after Abraham is going to have this. Everybody out of his line is going to have this. Everybody, forever. Okay? Uh, and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. So again, this continues. The land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Okay, so Canaan is basically the Israel-Palestine area. Uh, it includes other territories too, but for the most part, let's just call it Israel and Palestine, uh, which is where all that conflict of who does the land belong to. So this line right here for this everlasting possession is what is the center of this whole thing or at least part of it uh, for this land in the Middle East that's being fought over however this everlasting possession doesn't happen history and even the Bible in uh, Acts 7 5 and Hebrews eleven thirteen tell us that this promise was never kept so God lied 17.9, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in, in their generations. 17.10, And this my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. So that's the price he has to pay. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. So to make this deal work so that you can be the father of nations, you have to cut off a piece of your penis. Not sure why, but that's what it is. Um, 17.12, And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man-child in your generations, that he is born in the house, or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. So God understands that Abraham has slaves and apparently has no problem with it. On top of that, the slaves get it too? Can we talk about this a little bit? He that is born in thy house and is uh, that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So does that mean the slaves get to be king, father of kings too? You know, they're, they're the father of nations as well. This, does it move into the slaves or do they just stay slaves? Betting it's the latter. Um, 17, uh, 1714, And the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. All right, so I'm going to be your slave. I really don't care if I'm cut off from my people as long as you don't cut off part of my person. 
You know what I mean? Aren't slaves already cut off from their people? Just a thought there. Well, I mean, I don't understand why the slaves got to get it too. Now, can you imagine being one of these people being sold this idea from Abraham? All right, well, God, talk to me. I have to cut off a piece of your penis. I, I can only imagine how he convinced them of this. Uh, moving on. God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her names... Uh, uh, well, I, I keep calling it Sarah because it is Sarah, but anyway, it changes. It's S-A-R-I-A-I, uh, and it changes it to S-A-R-A-H. Now, remember, with uh, with Abram which meant high father, it was changed to Abraham because he was changed to a father of, of a multitude of, or of, a father of nations. Uh, with Sarah, her name was changed because the Sarah, spelled S-A-R-A-H, means princess. Her real name means, well, princess. So, I'm not sure why she has to change her name. And I will bless her and give her uh, give thee a son also of her. Uh, yea, I will bless her, and she will be the mother of nations. King of people shall be of her. Um, seventeen, seventeen, and then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old, and and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? So he's kind of laughing at God here because he's 99 uh, and Sarah is, is 90 that you know they're going to have this this child he, he has to go cut off his penis for for this for this God uh, but he's not convinced that he's going to give him a child so much for omnipotent God replies uh, oh he says and Abraham said unto God oh that Ishmael might live before thee and God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. So not only does he going to have the child, but now he's being told what to name the kid. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. There it is again, everlasting, with his seed after him. Um, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. So now Ishmael is going to go on to be a, a, a big wig too. However, 1721, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. So Ishmael is cut out from the covenant. Poor Ishmael, right? He's left out of the, the covenant. Well, at least he doesn't have to have his penis cut off. Um, and he, you know, he gets to have uh, 12 princes under him. So I guess it's not a, a horrible thing for Ishmael. He just doesn't get to be part of the covenant. Um, and, he sh and he left off talking with him, and God went up from Abraham. So God left. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in the house, and all that were bought with his money, his slaves, uh, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same in the self same day as God said unto him. And Abraham was ninety uh, years old and nine; he was ninety nine when he circumcised the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised. He was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Wait a minute! Didn't they say Ishmael was getting left out of the covenant? All right, so he's left out of the covenant. And he has to cut off his foreskin. Poor Ishmael. I'm feeling bad for this guy. 13 years old. And in the same self day, Abraham circumcised in his, and Ishmael his son. And all of the men of the house, born in the house, that bought with money and a stranger were circumcised with him. So everybody got circumcised at this point. So, uh, so there you have it. This is the covenant that God made with Abraham. Uh, he had to change his name, uh, his wife had to change her name, uh, his uh, son Ishmael had to cut off his penis but was left out of the covenant that was required to cut off his penis. Uh, but, and all of his slaves, which, you know, you know, the Bible doesn't support slavery, but yep, here's the slaves. They all have to have their penis cut off so that they can all avoid being cut off from their family uh, and get these blessings even though the slaves don't actually get the blessings. I don't get it, but, you know, whatever. This is why... So many people have their foreskins removed. Don't take my word for it. Think for yourself.